Uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to revisit um, where we left off last time. If you recall last time there was a little bit of a problem. And then we're going to go on to doing inserts. One thing that you should realize is some of these things I've shown on a grid view, some of these things I've shown on a details view, but it goes both ways. Uh, in other words, the things that I talk about that work in a grid view are almost the same on a details view and vice versa. The one exception being is that you can't insert into a grid. You can edit and delete on a grid view and details view and you can only insert on a details view. Alright, so let's bring this up and running into last time, if you recall, is I was having trouble creating or grabbing the key of the, of the row that I was going to delete. And I'm not sure exactly what I was doing wrong, but a student in lab found out the correct solution, so I want to start off by sharing that with you and speak a bit about what I was trying to get across with this. So to refresh our memory, we have it such that if you try to delete a category, an age category, it pops up a link that says, hey, there are probably some people for that age group. Click here to see a list of those. And in that way, you could reassign it. And again, the hypothetical situation I talked about is where maybe someone accidentally entered in the duplicate categories. So maybe there's only supposed to be one category, 10 to 11, and erroneously some person got assigned to 10-11 and some people got assigned to 10 to 11. So if you go and delete this, it will warn you and it will say, cannot delete, probable cause. There are players for this age range. Show players for the age range that you tried to delete. And if you click on that, then it goes and it shows the player for that age range. All right. The problem I had last time was getting that key so that I could create the URL. Notice we're passing on the, on the query string the age range ID in question here. All right. Now keep in mind, Code like this particular page would exist only in an administrator mode. How could you enf enforce an administrator mode? In other words, let's say, for example, that, you know, I was able to log in as an admin, but I wouldn't want any player going in and deleting or reassigning people. Uh, the way I... On my, like my website, for example, and I don't know if this is how it would normally be done, but you could only access the student information page and the information specific to that student if you log in as that student. Okay. So like you couldn't go directly to the page that said, take me to the student information page. You had to be logged in in order to go to okay. the student information and, page. And, that, and that's what we do here for, for the student information page. 
uh, or the player information page. We, we do that here. We, we only retrieve the page. We only allow you to get to that page if you're logged on, and then we retrieve the person that's logged on their player information to edit that. But I guess the question I have is, is something like this, we wouldn't want any player that's registered for the league to be able to go in and delete or edit age ranges or whatever. How could we limit access to this to an administrator? Property. Property, and where would we put that property? A session variable, and you have some sort of code. We could create another session variable. In other words, I could have a, I could have a user's um, table that, um, one of the one of the attributes of that could be is this person an administrator, and when the person logged on, I could set that session variable, and then I could do very similar to what I do on the player page when they open up that page, look to see not just if they're logged on, but if they're logged on as an administrator. All right, and then you could keep them from that. I guess what I'm talking about is this code here, this player info page. Notice that in the code behind, right in the page load event, I look to see if the player ID is null. That is, I look to see if they're logged on or not. If they are not logged on, then I redirect them to the login page. If they are logged on, then they can continue, and the retrieve will only retrieve, if you remember the retrieve for that data source, will only retrieve the player information for that particular session variable that we stored in player ID. All right. So if you want to do administrator, what you could do is you could add to the user table a flag that says administrator, true or false. And that could be another thing that you check, similar to what we did here, that would say if administrator is not equal to true, if it's null or false, then we could redirect them somewhere else. Questions? So you would direct them to a separate? Yeah, it, it would be like, what would you want to have happen if they tried, if someone typed in the URL? Remember, we could make it, we could change the navigation so that they're not an administrator, they don't even see that link. But you have to account for the fact that I could be peeking over the shoulder of an administrator, or they could have bookmarked a page, and I could go to their computer and try to click and go to that page. Um, without going through the navigation. So we want checks in the page itself. You don't simply want to hide it in the navigation because what if they happen to know the exact URL to get into? So you'd want that in the page, oh, a page load event to look at their credentials and, and not allow them to, to pass if they, don't, if they don't match the credentials. So the line of code that I was missing last time or that I was getting wrong, and I'm still not 100% sure what I was doing wrong, but was this one. This is a syntax to get the key. Now, in this particular case, this table had a single part key. So I only need to look at E keys sub zero. Sub zero meaning the first one, and I turn that into a string. I then add that onto the end of my URL. Players by age range, ASPX question mark, age ID equals that. All right. And then I set that link, set the hyperlinks, navigate URL to that URL, and then if you click on it, it takes you to that page. Now, I'm going to cheat. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Means you're going to try. Pardon me? Means you're going to try. Change 
cheat. That's right. Oh. All right. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to put in, I'm going to hard code the player ID for the administrator here just to demonstrate what I mean. Um, let's look in the database to find me. <coughs> so I have a player ID of four. Okay, we'll consider that makes me an administrator, which again is a bad assumption. You'd really want to add another column in here. All right. In fact, never mind. Let's let's not cheat. Let's go in and let's do this for real. I'll go in here and I'll create an administrator flag. And I'll set it to a boolean. Access has to make it easy for you so they don't call it a boolean. Yes. It's a yes or no. They disrespect the memory of George Bull, who is the person that created the concept of true or false in a logic standpoint, perspective. So I created an administrator field. I'll then go in and let me populate it. And I will set me to be an administrator. Now again, this uh, I'm still cheating a, t a teensy bit because... I am, you know, normally an administrator wouldn't be in the player table, right? Because, you know, the admins, you're not going to have a 12-year-old kid that plays third base for the Yankees be the administrator. Uh, nor are you going to have, um, you know, the 48-year-old the guy who is um, administering the database play first base for the Cubs or something like that. So really, um, the player table probably isn't the place for that, but we're going to pretend it is. All right. So, what do I have to do to make this work now? Adding code that detects if that's yes or no. All right. First thing I have to do, and you're right, first thing I have to do, though, is I have to set the session variable. Which means that my query, I'm selecting player ID, user password from player, where user ID equals something and user password equals something. I'm also going to want to put administrator in there, because I'm going to need to retrieve that as an additional field. Administrator. Right. Now, I'm going to have to create an administrator session variable and I'll set that to my data sub what? Two. two. Zero, one, and two. So now I have in the administrator session variable, I have whether they are in fact a administrator or not. So I could use that in my age range on the page load that would Redirect if they are not exactly. So I can look here and I can say if administrator is null, then I can redirect them to that. Do you want to put in if it's not null as well? Yes, I do. If it's not null, what do I need to do? Redirect to a, well, you, no, because you said you don't want to add the web page to it because if they had access to the address, then they could still get to it. Add permission. 
definitions, I would say. Okay. Well, let's think this through. I've set a session variable that contains a value of the administrator flag after the person is logged on. Right? So, if the session variable is null, what does that mean? It means they wouldn't have access to it. Well, that's true. But specifically, what does it mean? There's, there's, there's no administrator flag in that person's, right? They, they found nothing. Oh, because you're saying that this shouldn't be. I was thinking. You, you guys are kind of right. In the player table, you really shouldn't have that in there. So if there's no administrator flag, then it's, that, that means it's a player that's not an administrator. Right? Um, okay. No. <laughs> because. I have two rows in the player table. I have Mike and Don. Mike has a value of an administrator flag that is true. What value does Don have? No. False. He doesn't have no value, he has a false value. So, if I test the administrator session variable and I'm getting a null, what does that mean? I can't, I can't go where the administrator can, but does that mean that I might be Don? No. Because Don's administrator is not null. Don's administrator is false. False is different than null. All right? So if the administrator flag is null, what does that mean? The administrator hasn't logged in. That means that no one has logged in. All right. Not just no administrator, but no one. So you want to put then if it's false. Else. Else if. is any else statement. All right. We'll come back and fix the error in a minute here. Otherwise, if their session variable is false, then what do we want to do? Redirect. We also want to redirect. The point I'm making is that there's two conditions by which we <coughs> want to redirect. One is that no one's logged on. Two is that someone's logged on and they're not an administrator. Why can't I combine this? And again, you could write this a few different ways, but why can I not combine this into if session administrator equals null or session administrator equals false? Why can't I use a compound if statement there? I don't really see why you couldn't. Does anyone see why I couldn't? Is it because on one hand you're logged in? Well, you're not you mean like saying if it equals null or false, like in the one statement? You could be logged in and it's, and, yeah, I think it's used. In other words, I'm asking why can't I do this? It does. And in the case of that variable being null, um, then um, what do I want to say? 
then this is going to blow up and you'll get the dreaded null pointer reference. So let's go in and divide it into two parts. So we're going to check to see if no one's logged in. If no one's logged in, then we redirect them. Then we're going to check to see if the person that's logged in is not an administrator. And Let's see, it's telling me I can't say an equal because this session variable could actually be any sort of object I want. Now there is an a2 boolean, but there is a2 string. And there's probably a more elegant. This will probably fit the bill. So, I've set my start page to this. Why did, why did you have to two string that, would you say? Because a session variable can be any object. Oh, okay. So, so it doesn't know right now that it, it's going to be false. It, it doesn't know right now that it's a boolean, it can be true or false, it doesn't know anything about it. Gotcha. All right. So, I set my start page to. this guy. I go and run this. I get redirected to the default page, right? That's what I've expected. I'm not logged in. So I go in and I type in <coughs> the H I think it was. And I click that. And again, there'd be navigation here or whatever. But if Don goes in and tries to type in, what was the name of the page? Age range list, I think. Age ranges.aspx. me to get there, even though Don is not an administrator. Why is that? How are we going to figure this one out? Debug. Debug. Exactly. Great answer. Because what's our other option? Google. Google? Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow. Properties. Properties. Or the typical answer is I'm just going to stare at it for an hour and hope <laughs> that it makes sense. Find a wall banger. The the so I'm going to go and I'm going to set this. I'm going to find a systematic way to debug this. Oh. So I'm going to go. I'm going to start debugging it here. There we go. Because obviously something isn't what I thought it should be. All right. So let me run this. They should have a whole class on software debugging. Whole class. It took me three semesters to figure out you have to hit F10 to go to the next one. <laughs> Alright, so now I go in and type age ranges. Alright, and I'm there. I can hover over that. fails, I can go into immediate mode, and I can type in a question mark, and looky there, it's capital F for false, when I, when I convert to boolean for strings. Uh, yep, because F and... Smart F ass. And small, small F and two big F. Oh, see, 
on an hexadecimal scale of two different values. Yeah. I, so I'm going to go and do that, and I should be fine now. And see if you would have just been staring at it forever. <laughs> exactly. It would have come to you. Okay. Exactly. One, my, my one other piece of, of and, and one of the reasons I say this is that, and I know because I've programmed for forever, all right, um, it's probably not an exaggeration. I don't know how old everyone is in this classroom, but I probably started programming before many of you were born, all right, that when you have a problem, you sort of have stuck in your head what you think think is wrong, all right? I'll bet you that such and such is wrong. Well, that can be dangerous because you could be wrong, all right? You could be wrong about what is wrong, what you think is wrong. <clears throat> so if it isn't working, don't be thinking that you're so smart that you can isolate exactly why it isn't working. Prove to yourself find out exactly, make as few assumptions as possible, and systematically rule things out. What, what did, uh, there's a great Sherlock Holmes quote, something about when you've eliminated... Oh, all things... Yeah, all things... Will be impossible or now probable. Yeah, something okay. like that, yeah. But, yeah, there's a good one, but the point is, is you eliminate as much as you can, and what's left jumps out at you. So let's go in and let's log in as Don Huffman. Let's try to go to age ranges. And we get kicked back to the login. All right. Now let's say we log in as me. And let's say we get into age ranges .ispx, and I can get in there. Yay. Now, if you added a link to that within the login page, would that also detect at that point that you, he's not the admin? Well, you would have to code it, right? Right. So in other words, let's go add a link. Um, it's a shame I didn't do a master page for this, so I could just like add it to everything. You know, but let's go, let's go and add a link on the player page. That's what that's what upset me most about your homework assignments is I never made any master pages. So every time I added your page, I had to completely redo it. Well, then you'll learn your lesson, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> All well, right. I was used to your HTML. HTML course, every assignment was a new web page. Right. So I figured every assignment would be a new web page in this, but no. All right. So let's go in and let's make a link here. And we'll make the link go to. I just made a bunch of people drop your HTML course. Oh, the website every week. same code here, but instead of redirecting, I'm going to set that. The hyperlink is invisible. I'm about to. I created a hyperlink to the age range list. I don't want to show that hyperlink if they are not an administrator. So I will go in and I'll say, all right, hyperlink one. If they are not logged on, which they shouldn't hit this point, go ahead. Don't you still want to leave the redirect in there, though? You just delete the redirect. If they're not logged on at all, this redirect kicks in. So, the, yeah, they will be redirected. Oh. Um, if they are logged in, um, in fact, I could actually, if they're not logged in, I could actually cut 
part of this if statement out and simplify it. <laughs> all right. So if they're not logged in at all, they get booted. If they are logged in and they are not an administrator, then I make the hyperlink invisible because then they're just a normal user and they can see their player information, but they can't see. They shouldn't be able to see the other page. So now I go in. So I go in and I log in as Don. No link. And if he was looking over my shoulder and knows the link, he's still foiled because there's redirect code in there. At least in the, in the actual page name, there's redirect code there. Whereas if I log on, then I got that as well, and I can go to it. Now if I go to delete, show players the age range you tried to delete, I click on that, I should be able to go in and edit this. Now, I should put the same logic in this page, just so someone couldn't type directly this URL and get to it, right? Because this is an administrator only page, all right? I could then make this an edit page, all right, so that I could edit. So for example, in this case, I have two sort of redundant age categories. Someone inadvertently entered in two categories for 10 to 11, and some players got assigned to both. I could make it so I click on this. I reassign this person to the proper category, save it, then go back to this page, and then I'd be able to delete the category once I've cleared all the players off. I'm not going to go and do that, but that would be a good exercise if you wanted to try it, to go and make that editable. All right? So you could make that player by age range editable, allow you to reassign that, and then send it back to this page, and then they could, now that you've cleared out that age category, cleared out all the players from the age category, you'd be able to then go and delete the erroneous age category. The other thing you'd need to do, again, is on that second page, you'd need to put the same check to see if they're an administrator, and if they're an administrator, don't let them, if they're not an administrator, don't let them get to that page. Questions? Now, one of the reasons I did this is to demonstrate sort of the difference between a database constraint and what you can do interface-wise, okay? In other words, I did not want to cascade the deletes between age range and player. Because if I delete an age range and there's players assigned to that, I don't want to be able, I don't want the cascade delete to run out and delete all the players associated with that age range. So I put a restrict delete on it. So you might ask the question then, well, what happens if someone did get misassigned to a category? How, you mean, how am I going to track down? There's a lot of things that you can do interface-wise to make your life easier. All right? So, for example, what I have here is I have code that, yeah, it enforces the referential integrity and, and does not cascade the delete, but it could give the administrator 
a fairly straightforward way to correct that problem and reassign players to the proper age range. So you need to separate it in your mind when you're defining these constraints, what you're going to do in the database versus what you can do in the application and through the user interface design to sort of allow administrators to get around it and create and, and fix problems and so on. Generally speaking, you want to enforce as much, as many restrictions as you can in the database. The reason for that is if it's enforced in the database, then it doesn't matter what program is trying to do some potentially damaging operation. The database is the gatekeeper. It simply won't let anything bad happen. So I could write, if I've enforced the restrict delete here, I could write 50 different pages that try to delete age ranges. None of them are going to work. None of them are going to be able to delete an age range if there's players assigned to it. So you enforce the restrictions in the database because that makes them universally enforced. Now, that doesn't mean that you may, for a given situation, need some way to handle situations and give the user a, a, or the administrative user an easy way to go in and correct the problem and reassign people. I think I gave the example of like if a sales rep quits, you might want to reassign their customers, all the customers for that sales rep to uh, a different sales rep. So you definitely don't want to delete those customers if a sales rep quits, but you could, through the UI, create an easy way to transfer sales rep or customers to sales reps. So the database design, you want it to be restrictive. You want it to enforce the integrity of the data. So you'll put, really, the more restrictions you can put on the data, the better it is because then you guarantee that the data is good. Through your user interface design, you can make it so that certain people, anyhow, have the permission to go in and, and can more easily correct problems. So there's two ways of dealing with that that kind of gives you um, the best of both worlds. All right? When you uh, mean uh, apply these restrictions, uh, how are you? I, well, this particular restriction I applied through a foreign key, right? I went in, and we can look at the database. I went in, to the database, and I said there's a foreign key between age range and player, and I'm not cascading delete. So that's a constraint, right? That's a restriction. That means I cannot delete from the age range table if there's players for that given age range. So that's what I mean by a restriction or a constraint. Um, specifically, these referential integrity constraints are the, the main one that I'm speaking of. But uh, I understand about not... <clears throat> Checking the cascade delete because I think it kind of throws mm -hmm. the baby out with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's say with this case, uh, one of the players dies. So uh, no, I'm not. I'm just well, that's well, pretty quits. Somebody quits. That's a little bit. But yeah, yeah, moves, moves moves to a moves. nicer neighborhood. There you go. He moves. Imagine his ten-year-old guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But how, how do you? How would you restrictively? Eliminate all reference of that person without well, taking his age group and well remember. Away as well. well, remember the the cascading delete works in one direction only. In other words, this is a one to many relationship. That means that when I delete an age range, the question is, do I want to delete all the players? No. no. So I set no to cascade delete. If I delete a player, what impact does that have on the age range? None. 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 Right? Because the relationship is 
one player points to an age range. An age range doesn't point to a player. Remember the whole idea. This is where instead of memorizing rules, um, it, it, it is effective to really think about really what you're doing here. What is the purpose of these foreign keys and these restrictions? The purpose is, and again, this is going to sound even grimmer given the context of the original question, you don't want to, quote, orphan any of these rows, right? So if I was able to delete an age range, and there were players out there for that age range, then I'd have a player for a non-existent age range, and that's not good. So I define a foreign key between it. If I delete a player, am I orphaning any age ranges? No, because there's no player ID in age range that points to a particular player. Uh, but with, with that connection mm -hmm. that you have marked there, I mean, how would you, you only really have one or two boxes to check, how would you, how would you even mark it to say, hey, I, I get rid of a player? There's no need to mark it. There's no need to mark it. Right. If I delete a play, uh, again, if I delete an, uh, an age range, then there could be someone in this table that had that age range. All right. And I either got a restrict deletion or I got to delete the player too. Right. Let me, let me write it on the board. And it is on the many side too. Right. It's always on the many side. One side can't be deleted. But again, let, let's, let's think this through. Let, let's, let's put up some data here. Let's say if I have an age range, one, two, and three, with their appropriate descriptions. And then I have a player table, player one, belongs to age range one. Player two also belongs to age range one. Player three belongs to age range three. Player four belongs to age range three. All right. Let's imagine no foreign keys are set up and let's consider the issues. If no foreign keys are set up, then if I delete age range 1, I got a problem, right? Because if no foreign keys are set up and I delete age range 1, then I have player 1 and 2 for a non-existent age range. And that's not good. Those are orphaned, right? If there was no foreign key defined. All right. So, I can't orphan a player. I can't orphan a row in this table. So one of my choices is to say, when I delete this age range, I'm going to delete these players as well. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? You know, just because I had an erroneous age range in there, I don't want to go and delete the players. So my other option is not to cascade but to restrict deletion, which means if I try to delete age, age range 1, it's going to look and say, hey, I can't, because age range 1 is on players 1 and 2, and therefore it won't allow deletion. So no one's orphaned, right? So the two scenarios which are valid from a data integrity perspective are I can't delete either of them or I delete all of them, <laughs> all right? But I can't leave a player here hanging with a non-existent age range ID. So my choices are get rid of all the players or don't delete the age range. What about age range two? Assuming this is the only data, can I delete age range 2? Goodbye. Yeah. Why? Because I'm not orphaning anyone there. There's no person there. Assume, again, assuming these are all the, all the data, there's no player that has an age range of 2. 
So, yeah, I can most certainly delete that. Now, as far as your question about what if player four moves, and I need to delete them out of the database. If I delete player four out of the database, what exactly have I orphaned? What exactly is out there pointing to player four so that now there is something pointing to a non-existent player? There's nothing, right? I got rid of player four. Okay, is there anything trying to point to player four that can? No. Put differently, the cascading delete works from the one side down to the many. If I delete the parent, the age range, should I delete the players, the children? If I delete the children, I'm not causing a referential integrity issue. Now, if there are other, other tables involved, maybe, for example, in the team table, there was a player captain that player four was, then I would be orphaning that row. I'd be, if I deleted player four, then all of a sudden this team has no captain. But that's not the database that we have here. All right? Does that help clarify it? Thinking in terms of of referential integrity of rows in one table pointing to a row in another table that's no longer there. In this scenario, no, in this scenario with only the two tables, the only thing I have is I have players pointing to age ranges. Nothing is pointing to a player. So I can delete players to my heart's content because it won't leave anything out there hanging. So on that, uh, that ERD that you had laid out, how would you mark that it's okay to take out a player? Well, you would define anywhere, and I'm just going to draw a blank ERD. So, <coughs> and this is probably not close to the ERD we had, but it'll do. How I would determine if it's okay to delete a player would be, I would look at any relationship that was pointing to a player. That would be this one and this one. And then I would have to assess, do I want to cascade delete? All right? And if I wanted to cascade delete, then I'd set it to cascade delete. And I'd do that for each of the relationships. Let's think, let's put up here this. Let's say we have a player table, a team table, and we have a player team table. Let's say we have that. Should I set this relationship to cascade or restrict? Let's think of the situation. Johnny moves out of town. All right. 
If these are the only tables that I have, all right, let's make that caveat. These are the only tables I have. Should I be able to delete Johnny? And Johnny's on the Tigers. I think you should be able to take Johnny from the player and delete him on the player team. Okay. And, and you wouldn't make any change anywhere else. <coughs> Does that sound good to everyone else? Sure. All right. In other words, if Johnny moves, he's no longer going to be playing for the Tigers. So... If I delete Johnny out of this table, I'll, I won't use actual, I won't use IDs, I'll use descriptive fields. I would say in this case, yeah, cascade delete all you want. Because if Johnny moves out of town and is not in the league, I should be able to delete them, and it should delete the entry in this table that says Johnny plays on the Tigers. You would right. actually want to delete it. You would want to delete it, right. You wouldn't want to have to go in and, and do a multiple step thing. This is assuming, again, that a player can play on more than one team. All right. I, I can't remember how we eventually decided that question back when we originally drew the ERD. But yeah, you don't want to cascade down. Again, it, it, in database terms, this example of a dependent versus independent entity. All right? In other words, the fact that Johnny is on the Tigers roster is dependent on the fact that there is such a person named Johnny. Right? All right? If there's no person called Johnny, then... The fact that Johnny is on the Tigers is meaningless. So the only way this makes sense is if there's someone named Johnny. So if Johnny goes away, then this goes away. Let's think of that with our age range and player, though. Player as an independent existence. In other words, if the age range 10 to 11 goes away, does Johnny go away? No. <laughs> so therefore, I would restrict the lead. Because yeah, there's still a kid in our city named Johnny that wants to play baseball. Regardless of whether I've gotten, regardless of what the age categories are. Alright? In this case, there is still no, there is no roster entry for Johnny on the Tigers if there is no Johnny anymore. So this would be the case of a dependent entity. One where you see this uh, a lot would be um, between, like a relationship between an order and a line number, or, or a line item. You know, like let's say I make an order for Amazon and I buy three books. I have one order. And one of the line items is I want to copy this book. I have a second line item, a copy of that book. Third line item for another book. If I go and say I want to cancel my order, those line items don't make any sense anymore if there is no order. So I'm going to also cascade delete and get rid of the line items. All right. Questions about this? Now, the point is, is that depending on the situation, when you implement these restrictions in the database, you can, how do I want to say this? You can, via your user interface, give an easy way to correct it. All right? Like I started to do with the age range. I set the age range to, to restrict because, yeah, Johnny still exists even if I get rid of the age range that Johnny belongs to. But I can make a simple uh, app, a simple user interface to reassign Johnny to another proper age group um, in the case of I wanted to get rid of that age range. You know, maybe, you know, and again, thinking through, maybe if we have a summer league, 
we have an 8 to 9 age range and a 10 to 11 age range. And after registration, we realized that, um, gee, there's not enough kids in the 8 to 9. Let's combine them and let's just make one big 8 to 11. So I'd have to reassign everyone in the 8 to 9 age range to the 8, to, to the eight and 11 age range. I could create a user interface that would, just like here, if I try to delete that age range, it will show me the players that are in that range. And if I made that grid view editable, I could go and reassign them to the, to the proper age range. Questions? That seems almost like a form you might have in your database, only you're taking it out and putting it on the page. Exactly. Well, I mean, what you're building here is you're building a database application. All right. In Access, you know, you're used to talking about forms and reports and all that. But really, typically, Access is kind of a mutant, right? It's kind of partly, a, sort of like a, sort of a kind of a database server or database engine, and it's partly a, a little mini application development tool. Well, again, it's not really particularly good for any of those things, all right? So, the better model, the more robust model, is you have a real database server, like SQL Server, Oracle, whatever. And then you have a web front end, a web interface, a um, Java interface, a C-sharp interface, a mobile interface that can connect to that database and do its thing. And again, would I do this? Well, I don't know, but if there was something that was fairly common in my organization, I would keep the restrictions in the database to be sure, but I would build a, a user interface that would make things easy for me um, if one of these things happened. You know, the one I'm thinking of that kind of would make sense is if, a sa if you get rid of a sales rep, uh, some kind of thing to um, reassign that person's customers to a new sales rep. You know, if Joe leaves the Ohio area, maybe Fran takes over all of Joe's customers. I could make it simpler still, the interface. It simply says, take all the sales reps assigned to Joe and assign them to Fran. And I could do that if I wanted to. Would I build that interface if it's something my organization did? Often, yeah, I might. Other questions? Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about inserting. We're going to talk about, for example, how to insert a new player into the database. All right? We haven't covered inserts yet. Remember, inserts only work in details view. They do not work in grid view. Now, let's look at something briefly and let's sort of take inventory. I think it's, I think that the one of those things is, 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 is vibrating and it's. It's tapping on, but doing it perfectly. It's like consistent. It's like the telltale heart. Do you know what it's called? Yeah. That's a good story. Now that's all I'm going to be able to hear for the rest of the class. <laughs> I mean, I think I heard it before, but but I, you know, I kind of just, yeah, you kind of just blocked it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's look at this player info page. All right, I go and I run it and log on. And it brings up my information in edit mode. 
okay? And then I can update it or cancel or whatever. Now, what would the difference be? This is to edit a player that already exists. What would be the difference between the way this screen looks and the screen to add a new player? It would look the same, just all blank fields. It would look the same, but all blank fields. So, I'm going to ask a question, and I'm going to cover my ears. All right? So what would you think if I were to say, I want to make a separate page to add player info? Uh, Very good. Why? Because there would be some duplicated code. Right. So I'm not going to do that. What am I going to do? I'm going to tell, I'm going to use this page, but I'm going to use it in two ways. I'm going to use it in one way to edit player info. I'm going to use it in another way to add player info. So I'm going to take this page and I'm going to Just reuse, it. reuse it in a slightly different way. So would you, in your login page, would you have like a sign up button? Yeah, you, you could do something like that. And then just leave everything blank once it loads the data. Now, exactly. So now how is this page going to be smart enough to know whether to be an add or an edit? The, uh, kind of the session variable. The session variable, right? If I'm logged on and I have a session, my, my user ID is set, then it knows I'm logged on and it should go and be an edit page. If I'm not logged on, then I must want to be adding a new user. I must want to be registering for the site. All right? So we're no longer going to redirect people if they're not logged on. All right? We're not no longer going to redirect people if we're going to log on. We're simply going to give them the insert page, and the insert version of this page, as opposed to the update version of this page. How do we switch and make a page be in insert mode versus update mode? Adding a new session variable? No, we don't really need to add a new session variable. Well, if you can just put, like, if login equals true of some sort, then show this. Right. Else show nothing. Right. Well, we, we, we already have the code to see if someone's logged on. So we have that first part. I guess my question is, is how do I make this details view sometimes show nothing, sometimes show data from the database? Well. Well, the other thing is, is that the page is set not to let you see it if you're not logged in. Right. Well, we're going to change that. We're going to change that so it will let you see it, but it'll put it in insert mode. The answer to that is we're going to go in, and if you remember, there is a property. For the record, I, just, I did just say property. It's okay. And I keep scrolling past it. Default mode, edit. Okay? Default mode edit means that when this page is displayed, that grid view is not, or that details view is not in read only mode, but it's in edit view, edit mode. Right? What are our three choices here? We have three choices. We have read only, edit, and insert. <coughs> well, it makes sense if we're bringing up an existing person to pop them immediately into edit mode. All right? However, if we don't have an existing person, we want to put them in insert mode. All right? Well, how do we do that? Well, we see that there's a property to do that. All right? And we've learned since the beginning of class, roughly, you know, probably within the first couple of weeks, that you can manipulate the page and you can set those properties to make the page do what you want it to do.
So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make sure, first of all, that inserting is enabled. Which it won't allow me to do because I don't have an insert SQL statement. So I'm going to go into insert and I'm just going to <coughs> type in a dummy insert statement. This will not work by the way. say that I want to be able to in, in, insert into this. Alright. And I can write code in the code behind that says oops, if the session player ID is null I don't want to redirect them to the login page. I want to give them this page but put them in insert mode. So I will say details view 1, default mode equals statement because if they're not logged on they don't have an administrator session variable <coughs> all right I'm going to go here and I'm going to put a hyperlink to register put in as a navigate URL player info.aspx. So now I go to this guy. I get my link. I click on it and I get that page in insert mode. Now this is going to work because I put in a bogus, I put in a bogus insert statement. But you have blank fields. But you have blank fields. And if I log in, it brings it up and it's populated. So I have the one page that works in two modes depending on whether they're logged in or not. And this is important. This is why, you know, in the early part of the class we went over examples and, and you know, I use the, one of my dozens of catchphrases, there's an attribute for it, right? Because remember, you can customize any aspect of the page simply by manipulating the attributes of the page depending on the circumstances. So in this case, we look to see if someone's logged on. If they're logged on, we give them their information to edit. If they're not logged on, we give them a blank page to go and insert. And we want to redirect them somewhere like after they 
registered and I'm just going to want to stay there? Right? Well, that, that's a good question. We, I've been a little sloppy about that. I mean, even after the update, we could redirect them. And, yeah, we'll look at that next time as well. This is what we'll pick up on next time, um, where we'll go and actually make the insert work. All right. Do you want to see us anywhere? I want to I, I, we are adjourning to BU202. <laughs> you don't want to some extra time off Thursday to try and get some help. Do you mind giving me some help with that on Thursday? Because I can't find any like direct tutorials online to read um, up about it and things it, like that. And through go, sorting through your videos, it's it was so long ago that you talked about it. I don't know which one of the videos yeah. it is. Uh, feel free also to email to me. I can look, you know, that way if it's something that's pretty simple, you know, yeah. we, can, it, we can fix it. If not, we can, we can talk it, about it. It probably is. It's like the one where, um, which one was it? When the when I put validation in for when they update the fields, the, the students update the fields of their own things, when the page loads up, it automatically loads.